Job to tell them, everybody. Job to tell them, brothers and sisters. As a, we hope everybody doing great today and wonderful by the grace of Ahaya Lahayam. We pray Ahaya holds the stream. As you can see, I don't have my, my usual background. I'm out here on the road. Ahaya just prosper the work today. Job to tell them, everybody. Job to tell them, brothers and sisters. As a, we hope everybody doing great today and wonderful by the grace of Ahaya Lahayam. We pray Ahaya holds the stream. As you can see, I don't have my, my usual background. I'm out here on the road. Um, and how you just prosper the work today. We are continuing on. I hope everybody got to review the lesson on the tribe of Reuben. We're continuing on to the tribe of Simeon today. And I have a wonderful lesson in store for everybody. So we hope everybody enjoys it. Hope everybody's been having a blessed chapter today. We hope your week has been prosperous and the work of Elohim. That he's been prospering in our hands. Tell folks. Tell the child brothers and sisters. Great to spend this time with you all and praise Ahaya for this opportunity. Seeing as though we all in different places, yet Ahaya is prospering the opportunity to commune with you all and continue. So thank you all for your prayers and your patience with us in this time. All right. So let's get started with the tribe of Simeon today. All right. The 10 tribes predominantly they went to the regions of Asher, which was the islands of the Indian Ocean, Pacific Ocean, the Americas, North, Central and South, and the Caribbean. They are known predominantly as the Aboriginals, Indigenous, or Natives of those lands and islands. Today, the Ten Tribes are scattered across the world presently, so they are not regulated to being in one specific area of the world right now. The ten tribes consist of Reuben, Simeon, Dan, Naphtali, Issachar, Zebulon, Gad, Asher, Ephraim, and Manasseh. The inhabitants of the southern kingdom now consisted of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, with a remnant of Simeon and a remnant of the ten tribes. Uh, the inhabitants of Judah were still among the lands of the sons of Noah, which was Europe, Asia, Middle East, Mediterranean, and Africa and migrated predominantly due to persecution into sub-Saharan Africa, where they were enslaved and transported throughout the lands of the children of Noah and further into the lands where the 10 tribes resided in the regions of Asura, known today unto us as the New World. And they became known as the slaves, Negroes, Blacks, the, or the Bantus of Africa, respectively. In one's personal search for one's tribal origin, one must start by prayer because we have to make our requests known with supplication. Then one has to look at our father's lineage to know our tribes according to the scriptures, like Numbers chapter 1, verse 2 and 22, even for the tribe of Simeon. If one's ancestry stems back to the slaves, Negroes, Bantus of Africa, or the cargo slave ships, then one is more than likely from the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, or Levi, with a slim chance of Simeon, or the ten tribes. On the other hand, if one's ancestry stems back to the Native Americans or the indigenous people of the Americas and Caribbean, or the aboriginals and indigenous tribes of the uh, Indian Ocean Islands and the Pacific Ocean Islands, then you are from the ten tribes of Israel. That helps differentiate to get at least a guide to know what direction to go. If you're from the indigenous people, you're not a Benjamite, a Judite, or a Levite. Tracing your lineage through your father. This series of lessons are to identify the 12 tribes individually according to the spiritual indicators that the patriarchs documented that children would face. We know the signs and curses that help to identify the children of Israel around the world today. Yet, through the spiritual indicators and the admonitions of the patriarchs, one can identify which specific tribe a person of the house of Israel originates from. It is by the spirit that Ahaya has given the grace to truly identify which tribe people actually come from, since it is she that brings things to remembrance, searches all things, and we cannot know anything except the spirit reveal them. Zachary, can you read John sixteen thirteen? 1426, please. John chapter 16, verse 13. Albeit when she, the spirit of truth, has come, she will guide you into all truth. For she shall not speak of herself, 
but whatsoever she shall hear, that shall she speak, and she will show you things to come. John 14 and 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, she shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, 1 Corinthians ahead, chapter 2 verse 10, But Elohim hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit search of all things, yea, the deep things of Elohim. But what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of Elohim knoweth no man, but the spirit of Elohim. All right. Now getting into this tribe of Simeon. Jacob testified that Simeon would struggle with cruelty, anger, and self-will. And wrath. Can we read Genesis 49, verse 5, please? And six. Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. Simeon and Levi are brethren, so they're similar. They both struggle with the instruments of cruelty, which are the evil spirits that they struggle with within their hearts. And when they are amongst each other, they usually get into trouble, as was in the case where Jacob saw what they did to the Shechemites. And it's not uncommon for Simeon and Levi to dwell amongst each other either. Let's focus on Simeon today. We'll get to Levi when that lesson comes. Now, in regards to the instruments of cruelty being in their habitations, Simeon's struggle is within his heart, so they may not be the same person as they portray on the outside. It's who they are within their heart. Now, we see the first thing. Simeon struggles with cruelty. Can you read that definition? It's a H2555 for the definition of cruelty, please. Okay. From H2554 violence, by implication wrong, by metonymy, mm -hmm. unjust gain. So they have ill dealings. They're violent. Remember, their struggle is within their heart, so they may not actually act on it, but in their heart, they think violently. As was in the case with Simeon, who plotted in his heart against his brother Joseph. And let's continue some of the definitions, please. Cruel or cruelty, damage, false injustice injustice is key they don't do things equitably because they're looking out for themselves and what they want due to their struggle with self-will which we're going to get to here shortly continue please oppressor unrighteous violence violence against or violence done violent dealing so we have a understanding of one of the struggles of the children of simeon injustice unjust gain doing things by deceit, not doing things uprightly, right? And also doing things violently, real aggressive. Verse 6, please, of Genesis 49. O my soul, come not thou into their secret. The secret is the inner man. And Jacob, knowing the inner struggles of Simeon, as we just discussed a few thus far, he didn't want people to be joined unto them or partaking what Simeon would be dealing with within his heart and his mind. Unto their assembly, mine honor. Be not thou united. Jacob doesn't want us united with them because of the spirits they struggle with within, like the following. For in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they dig down a wall. So we see that Simeon has an issue with anger and self-will. And can you read the definition of self-will, please? It's uh, 8, okay, 75, right. 22. Delight. Acceptable. Delight, desire, favor, good pleasure, own self a voluntary will. Right. So you can see the issue with self-will is doing what one wants to do, doing what's pleasing in one's own sight. We've seen some of the instruments of cruelty that Simeon struggles with thus far. Now Jacob goes on to mention the biggest issues that Simeon faced in Genesis 49 and 7. Cursed be their anger. For it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. So we see according to scripture, here in these end times, their wrath is what makes them cruel, and the anger being fierce. Hence you find them being violent. And also remember it's within, so it may just be the way they think, or the way they feel within their hearts, that where the violence and the anger and the cruel wrath is 
And knowing that Simeon and Levi are brethren, and when they get together, they're up to mischief, as how Jacob viewed the situation in Shechem. This is why he said he would divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel to keep them from committing evil together, knowing that they both were struggling with the inner cruelty within. And also today, this is why you can find Simeon among the indigenous and aboriginal peoples, which is being among Israel. And also you can find them in Judah or in Jacob among the Negroes, slaves, and the Bantu people. So Jacob testified of the cruelty, anger, and self-will. And wrath. So there we have some key spiritual indicators for Simeon seeing the struggles that his children would be facing. Now we're going to get into the testament of Simeon, and may I be gracious to help the children of Simeon understand these spirits and what's needed to overcome them. All right. Ready, Zach? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, the testament right. of Simeon, Simeon, chapter 1, verse 1. The copy of the words of Simeon, the things which he spake to his son before he died, in the hundred and twentieth year of his life, at which time Joseph his brother died. But when Simeon was sick, his sons came to visit him, and he strengthened himself and sat up and kissed them and said, Hearken my children to Simeon your father, and I will declare unto you what things I have in my heart. I was born of Jacob as my father's second son, and my mother Leah called me Simeon, because I had heard her prayer. His name is Chemanu. It means hearing, and you can get more edification on the Bantu's Hebrew document on number 98. It's interesting as we're going to see in the lesson that the very attribute of hearing is key for the children of Simeon, and it's key for faith altogether, because to whom we hearken and cleave to is to whom we obey. And we're going to see that that's important for the children of Simeon still to this day to hear, to be good hearers, to hearken. Very well. Hearing actually means to guard something, to guard what we're hearing, to guard the knowledge and to meditate on it, to help us and help the children of Simeon to do the things that their father encouraged them to do. Continue, please. Uh, verse three on chapter two. Moreover, I became strong exceedingly. I shrank from no achievement, nor was I afraid of aught. For my heart was hard and my liver was immovable and my bowels without compassion. Because valor also has been given from the Most High to men in soul and body. So the children of Simeon, they have valor. They're very strong-hearted, fearless. That's a great attribute when in righteousness, because they will not be hesitant to do the will of Allah in any matter. So you can see the good things that Simeon has passed down to his children. And the scriptures confirm a righteous Simeonite having that strength of heart in Judith, the daughter of Simeon, who went out to the great army and destroyed Holofernes through faith in Allah and risking her life for her nation. To confirm that Simeonites, when in faith, they stand in the face of danger without fear. Being strong-hearted like Judith was in the face of it all. Also, you can see the opposite and some of the struggles of the children of Simeon since their father was hard-hearted and not afraid of anything on the other end his children can be scary for example the elders of the city in the story of Judah they had made an agreement and swore an oath rashly being in fear of the army that came and also you had the children of Simeon in the story of Joshua when the Egyptians came they were afraid and wanting to cast themselves in the sea instead of standing in faith and not being afraid of the army before them to help understand the children of Simeon today. Another trait of Simeon with the instruments of cruelty, you know, the anger and wrath and that fearlessness of heart, you'll find that Simeonites, just like Simeon, they'll be quick to fight or not hesitant to fight. As in the case where you've seen Simeon in the book of Joshua, when he interacted with the Ishmaelites that had taken Joseph, he was ready to fight right away. He was, he had a short fuse. So that's a trait that you can find in the children of Simeon as well. They're ready for warfare. And those children of Simeon who are not willing to physically fight, 
you'll find that they'll be quick to get into a war of words and not hesitant to argue. All right. Hopefully that helps. All right. Continuing, please. For in the time of my youth, I was jealous in many things of Joseph. We see Simeon identifies his chief problem right away, jealousy. Now, Jacob mentioned the instruments of cruelty that Simeon struggled with was anger, self-will, and wrath. And now Simeon here, knowing the experiences of his own heart, went straight to jealousy to help us understand that children of Simeon today struggle with jealousy, anger, wrath, and self-will, doing what they want to do according to their desire. And these are the things that are going on within their habitations. So this is speaking after the inner man, not the person that they may portray on the outside, which may not be authentic. All right, continue, please. Because my father loved him beyond all. And jealousy because somebody else is being treated well. You'll find children of Simeon get jealous because they're not getting the attention that others are getting. As is in the case here with Simeon, he was jealous that his brother got more love than he did. Though he was also loved as well, it's just the instruments of cruelty within stir up the mind unto unrighteous thinking to not see straight. All right, continue, please. And I set my mind against him to destroy him because the prince of the sea sent forth the spirit of jealousy and blinded my mind. So we see how Simeon struggles of deceit and jealousy, and we see how it affects the mind. And notice in his speech how he said, I set my mind against him to destroy him. At that time, Simeon didn't realize he was already overtaken and he was in agreement with the spirit to be willing to destroy his brother and to agree with the angel of iniquity specifically the prince of deceit that sent forth jealousy unto him. So this is something children of Simeon have to be mindful of, deceit and jealousy. Also, the fact that Simeon set his mind against his brother shows that the Simeonites, they struggle with malice, plotting against folks, or thinking evil thoughts against the person. So that's something to be mindful of as well. Right. So that I regarded him not as a brother, nor did I spare even Jacob, my father. And that is key. You see how jealousy blinds the mind. We saw how Simeon struggled with anger as well. Anger does the same thing. So you can see how the children of Simeon, their mind once given over to jealousy by the deceit, they then struggle even more in having their mind clouded through the spirit of anger as well. When we touch on anger later on. All right. Continue, please. But his Elohim and the Elohim of his father sent forth his angel and delivered him out of my hands. But when I went to Shechem to bring ointment for the flocks, and Reuben to Dothan, where were our necessaries and all our stores? Judah, my brother, sold him to the Ishmaelites. And when Reuben heard these things, he was grieved, for he wished to restore him to his father. But on hearing this, I was exceedingly wroth against Judah, and that he let him go away alive. And for five months, I continued wrathful against him. Now we understand what causes Simeon to give in to anger. It's jealousy. And then, now that he's given in to anger, which further blinds his mind, now he's bitter and grudging. As you see, he held a grudge of Judah for five months, being wrathful with him. So Simeon's children struggle with holding grudges you'll find if you don't do what they want you to do they'll hold it against you before we go into the testing of dan i wanted to touch on something um as you see in both cases with joseph and with judah when simeon didn't get what he want he became cruel and angry now one of the problems that simeon was going to deal with was self-will and the self-will is your desire or something that Simeon was desirous of. Now, Simeon desired to be the favorite. And once he seen that Joseph was the favorite, he went into jealousy and anger and wrath. And also, when he seen that Judah had sold Joseph and he didn't get what he desired, then he went into the same rage. So, it's interesting with the tribe of Simeon, it seems that they don't get what they want. 
They go into jealousy and envy and rage. The envy comes with not getting what they want. The jealousy comes when somebody else has what they want. And then the rage comes after the fact when they didn't get what they wanted. So, pretty interesting. That's a good assessment of it so the children of Simeon can be able to see and know how his, these spirits work against them. That struggle of wanting what they want in self-will, it makes sense why Simeon admonishes them to be single-minded because a single-minded man, he doesn't envy nor does he seek after his own, but he only seeks after the will of Allah Hayim. So evidently that's very helpful for the children of Simeon with the things they struggle with. Since wanting what he wanted brought his struggles about. For well, the children of Simeon have to be very mindful of these things. And we have to visit the Testament of Dan and the Shepherd of Hermas, Mandate 5, to understand how the spirit of anger works so the children of Simeon can identify it in themselves and have the admonitions to overcome the anger and wrath leading unto bitterness. The only way to overcome it is through truth, long suffering, and understanding. We're going to touch in the Testament of Dan, chapter 2, verse 2 to 5, and chapter 3, and chapter 4, and then into the Shepherd of Hermas to get an understanding of the spirit of anger for those children of Simeon to identify it, to be aware of it, and stand aloof from it. Uh, the Testament of Dan, chapter 2, verse 2. For anger is blindness, and does not suffer one to see the face of any man with truth. For though it be a father or a mother, he behaveth toward them as enemies. Though it be a brother, he knoweth him not. Though it be a prophet of Ahia, he disobeyeth him. Though a righteous man, he regardeth him not. Though a friend, he doeth not acknowledge him. You heard what he said the spirit of anger does, and you remember what Simeon said. He didn't even regard Jacob his father in respect to his brother Joseph. You built on how the self-will leads to the jealousy and whatnot. He didn't get what he want. You can see how in that jealousy, anger had also set in as well by how Dan explained the spirit of anger. For well, the spirit of anger encompassed him with the net of deceit and blinded his eyes and through lying darkened his mind. There we see the spirit as they're working in both anger and jealousy, deceit. That deceit is important against the children of Simeon, deceiving the mind through, through lying because of self-will, through desire. Continue, please. And through lying darkeneth his mind, and giveth him and his own peculiar vision. That confirms what was also working with Simeon when he was given over to jealousy and his mind was blinded. It was anger as well. You can also see how the other testaments and the other records help further get edification on how these spirits work for us to overcome them and be aware of them, right? And the lying, of course, lying ties into cruelty, unjust dealings. One of the definitions of cruelty was false. And uh, so you can see how that ties in with what Simeon struggles with. You see, now you can kind of track to see how from self-will brings about the jealousy. And then you have all the spirits come up with that, right? right? Hopefully this helps understand how being content, being content in things is key for children of Simeon. And content with what Ahaya gives, right? And wherewith encompasseth it his eyes, with hatred of heart, so as to be envious of his brother. So you see how they come together? How did it encompass his eyes? Through hatred of heart to be envious of his brother. Right. It's interesting how these evil spirits, they feed on each other, essentially. Working together to get an advantage over the mind. Now, Simeon said the spirit of deceit sent forth jealousy, right? Now we can see the process of his downfall. Simeon wanted to be the favorite, and it angered him that Joseph was the favorite. Then, from Dan explaining anger, it's anger that encompassed him with the net of deceit, 
by the hatred of heart he had been inspired unto through his desire to be the favorite that gave place for him to be envious of his brother Joseph unto jealousy. And there you see how Simeon ends up in jealousy and envy. And his mind is blinded. And then he's holding a grudge because he can't see straight. So hopefully for children of Simeon. This helps understand how you can be led astray by the workings of these instruments of cruelty within your hearts. Avoiding self-will, anger, and envy is essential for you children of Simeon. Now that we got a better understanding of some of the inner workings of Simeon, we can see why Jacob harped on anger and wrath, seeing how anger was the one that caused that net of deceit to lead him astray. So let's continue in Dan for admonitions on anger for our brothers. The Testament of Dan, chapter 3, verse 1. But anger is an evil thing, my children, for it troubleth even the soul itself. And the body of the angry man it maketh its own, and over his soul it getteth the mastery. And it bestoweth upon the body power, that it may work all iniquity. And when the body does all these things, the soul justifies what is done, since it seeth not aright. And there you see how, through that anger, self-justification, self-righteousness is engendered. Because through that spirit causes one to think whatever one did was justified. It gives one an excuse. And that's how the spirit of deceit and lying also keeps working. Because that evil spirit is going to continue to tell one things that makes one feel what one's doing is right. Even though it's because one's angry. And as the scriptures show, when walking that spirit of anger, it empowers us to work all wickedness. And that's key for the children of Simeon to avoid anger because a part of the children of Simeon's issue is wickedness. As we go forward in the lesson, we'll see. We already talked about cruelty. That's unjust. That's morally wicked. Violence. These are acts of wickedness. So hopefully this helps see how important it is to avoid the spirit of anger as well. All right. Therefore, he that is wrathful if he be a mighty man, has a threefold power in his anger, one by the help of his servants, and a second by his wealth, whereby he persuadeth and overcometh wrongfully, and thirdly, having his own natural power, he worketh thereby the evil. And though the wrathful man be weak, yet hath he a power twofold of that which is by nature. For wrath ever abideth such in lawlessness, uh, this spirit goes always with lying at the right hand of Satan, that with cruelty and lying his works may be wrought. That's important for us to understand how dangerous these spirits are. They set the children of Simeon and all those that have part in it, or it has part in them, sets them right by Satan's side. You'd notice that it had said for wrath ever aided such in lawlessness and you see once Simeon gets to the point of anger can't keep the law because his mind is blinded by the net of deceit to see according to the wrong perspective he's going to walk according to his own mind and that's going to make him lawless not being subject to the law of Allah but what's right in his own sight now this spirit goeth always with lying at the right hand of satan this shows that Simeon not only struggles with wrath, but he also struggles with lying, as was in the case when he lied to Shechem and Hamor, setting them up to kill them when you read the story of Jasha. Anger helps also understand how the children of Simeon end up in cruelty, unjust dealings, unrighteousness, or falsehoods. Continue, please, in chapter 4 of Testament of Dan. Understand ye therefore the power of wrath, that it is vain. For it first of all giveth provocation by word, then by deeds it strengtheneth him who is angry. You see how the spirit of wrath looks for provocation by a word, waiting for somebody to say something so it can go ahead and deceive and enter in. All right, continue please. 
and with sharp losses disturbeth his mind, and so stirreth up with great wrath his soul. That's when you're on fire. Now you have scripture understanding that feeling when you're on fire from being angry, that boiling feeling. All right, continue, please. Therefore, when anyone speaketh against you, be, ye, be not ye moved to anger. This is a cure. Can you start that part again, Zach? Or this is one of the cures for overcoming anger for the children of Simeon, please. Therefore, when anyone speaketh against you, be not ye moved to anger. For if any man praiseth you as holy men, be not uplifted. Be not moved either to delight or to disgust. You see, temperance. Stay temperance regardless of what is being said. Stay even keel. Stay content. That is key for the children of Simeon. And also, if someone says something and the spirit of anger does come, what does the law say, Zach, what we're supposed to do? Sit upon that bed. Relax. Calm down. He said, be ye angry and sin not. Don't give in to it because now you understand. Once anger is there, it worketh lawlessness. So we won't be able to do a righteous work or speak righteously when angry. That's why we have to stop and calm down. And then we can move forward after calming down. All right? And know what's working against us. Don't be provoked by the word. All right? For first it pleaseth the hearing, and so maketh the mind keen to perceive the ground for provocation. And it's interesting that the spirit of wrath can please the hearing by compliments or by reproaches. So one has to be ever mindful. All right? Continue, please. And then being enraged, he thinketh that he is justly angry. You see how we get God. I got it got our guard down through getting comfortable and not staying in the right place and that temperance. And then whatever comes, whatever is said, makes us believe that we're justified, like the person just said something to, to set us off, or however it works to get us to give in to anger. All right? Continue, please. He has more cures of how to overcome this anger. If you fall into any loss or ruin, my children. Be not afflicted. For this very what? spirit maketh a man desire that which is perishable. This ties into self will, desires. You see how contentment keeps you? Be not afflicted, so stay away from sorrow. Stay away from sorrow, whatever happens. Stay in temperance because you don't want to get led in to to how anger can lead one to desire, to attempt to cause one to fall. Hopefully, again, to see how the struggles that Simeon faces from the self-will onward, they all work together to try to get him to fall. All right, continue, please. For this very okay. spirit maketh a man desire that which is perishable, in order that he may be enraged through the affliction. And if ye suffer loss voluntarily or involuntarily, be not vexed, for from vexation ariseth wrath with lying. Right. This is why you see you have to stay out of emotions. As you get vexed, you get sad about what happened, and or any emotional reaction to what happened is going to bring about wrath with lying. First, we're going to be lied to in our minds to, to provoke us to think we're justified in it, and we'll end up probably lying about whatever comes out of our mouth because anger leads to lawlessness. Sit upon your bed and relax. And pray and get back centered before moving forward. Psalm chapter 4 verse 4. It says, stand in awe and sin not. Uh, awe means to like to tremble or quake or rage. So when you're upset, you know, it says stand in awe. Like, like don't move your ground. <laughs> like if you're angry, don't react in it, right? And sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. So, so go sit down and commune with yourself and calm down. Right. <laughs> I'm in chapter 4, verse 7. 
All right. Moreover, a twofold mischief is wrath with lying. And they assist one another in order to stir the heart. You have deceit causing anger and jealousy to disturb the mind. And also that lying works with the wrath to disturb the heart. All right. And what what does this bring about? All this boiling and whatnot, all these spirits working against you. What does it bring about? Please, Zachwa. And when the soul is continually disturbed, a higher departs from it. Bellier ruleth over it. And that's why that angry temper separates us from Allahayim, working at the right hand of Satan. With these struggles, with the disturbing of the mind and the trouble in the heart, you will find that the children of Simeon suffer from sorrow, anxiety issues, or depression. It wouldn't be surprising to find them in that case. Now, let's go over to the Shepherd of Hermas to see how that angry temper literally separates us from Allah Hayyam and gives us over to the spirit of Belier to rule over us. Shepherd of Hermas, Mandate 5, Chapter 1, Verse 1. Be thou long suffering and understanding, he saith, and thou shalt have the mastery over all evil deeds and shalt work all righteousness. That's a cure for children of Simeon to overcome the anger. We just went over how terrible it is, and it's key to remember long suffering and understanding. You already have the admonition of being content to avoid that self will and being temperate to avoid angry temper. And in that temperance, long suffering and understanding is paramount to abide and work all righteousness. For if thou art Please long stop. suffering, the Holy Spirit that abideth in thee shall be pure, not being darkened by another evil spirit, but dwelling in a large room, shall rejoice and be glad with the vessel in which she dwelleth, and shall serve Allah with much cheerfulness, having prosperity in herself. So now you have the dichotomy, children of Simeon. You stay away from wrath and lying, deceit, envy. So your mind and your heart is not disturbed. Abiding in the law and suffering and godlessness, the Holy Spirit flourishes in you. Allah Hayyam prospers in you. All right? And when you see how cheerfulness is key, because to be content, one has to be actually thankful, happy for what one has. All right? So that's good ammunition there. Uh, continue, please. Or add if you have anything, brother. Continue. But if any angry temper approach, forthwith the Holy Spirit being delicate is straightened, not having place clear, and seeketh to retire from the place. For she is being choked by the evil spirit, and has no room to minister unto a higher, as she desireth being polluted by angry temper. For Ahia dwelleth in long suffering, but the devil in angry temper. So now that helps us understand how that the Allahia departed, that boiling feeling, literally boiling up, and the thing that's going to get poured out, the Holy Spirit is going to leave. We have to stay in that place of contentment, knowing what we're striving for, and knowing who we're striving to keep. All right? or striving to have, right? Thus that both the spirits then should be dwelling together is inconvenient and evil for that man in whom they dwell. For if you take a little wormwood and pour it into a jar of honey, is not the whole of the honey spoiled and all that honey ruined by a very small quantity of wormwood? For it destroys the sweetness of the honey and it no longer has the same attraction for the owner. Because it is rendered bitter and hath lost its use. But if the wormwood be not put into the honey, the honey is found sweet and becomes useful to its owner. Thou seest that long suffering is very sweet, beyond the sweetness of honey, and is useful to Ahia, and he dwelleth in it. But angry temper is bitter and useless, if then angry temper be mixed with long suffering, long suffering is polluted 
and the man's intercession is no longer useful to Elohim. It's key to recall to avoid bitterness and grudging. If one is bitter about anything, the spirit of angry temper is dwelling there. All right, continue, please. And it is vain, as has been mentioned before. It's useless because there's no profit to it. All right. I will fain no, sir, say I, the working of angry temper, that I may guard myself from it. Yea, verily, saith he, if thou guard not thyself from it, thou and thy family, thou hast lost all thy hope. But guard thyself from it, for I am with thee. Yea, and all men shall hold a loop from it, as many as have repented with their whole heart. For I will be with them, and will preserve them, for they all were justified by the most holy angel. Let me see, for parents, for your children of Simeon that are parents, you know, the spirit of anger, if you don't stand aloof from it, it will affect your household. So be encouraged that this, this battle within is for more than just ourselves. All right, continue, please. Here now, saith he, the working of angry temper, how evil it is, and how it subverteth the servants of Elohim by its own working, how it leadeth them astray from righteousness. But it doeth not lead astray them that are full in the faith, nor can it work upon them, because the power of Ahiah is with them, but them that are empty and double-minded it leadeth astray. There we see it's key to understand who is still being overcome by anchor temper is letting us know we need to grow in the faith. It's a, just a true indication of our lack, all right? Continue, please. For when it seeth such men in prosperity, it ensueth itself into the heart of the man. And for no cause whatever, the man or the woman is embittered on account of worldly matters, either about meats or some triviality, or about some friend, or about giving or receiving, or about follies of this kind. And you see how Testament of Dan ties right into that? That provocation, how it causes desire to lead us to provocation. It uses a word to catch us off guard and deceive us to give in to it. The holy angel is talking to Hermas of the same thing. As we get good understanding of how these spirits attack us. And for the children of Simeon, specifically the self-will, staying away from desiring what someone else has or something like that. You can see how you have to be very content so that you don't be embittered on account of worldly matters and different kinds of follies. Uh, continue, please. For all these things are foolish and vain and senseless and inexpedient for the servants of Elohim. Because we have to walk in contentment. The vanities of this world don't affect the servants of Elohim. Continue, please. Or we can understand the, the cure that we've been talking about here. Please. But long suffering is great and strong, and has a mighty and vigorous power, and is prosperous in great enlargement, blasphemous, exultant, free from care, glorifying Ahia at every season, having no bitterness in itself, remaining always gentle and tranquil. This long suffering, therefore, dwelleth with those whose faith is perfect. When Simeon's children come to repentance, this is the characteristics you'll find them in. This is essential for the children of Simeon because with Simeon spoke about how he had valor. And we see that that's uh, something inherent in the children of Simeon to have valor, to be very strong. And now knowing where strength really lies in the spirit of long suffering, this is encouraging for the children of Simeon to see how as they make the changes, they can prosper very well in the spirit of long suffering, given the natural attributes that come from, from Elohim unto their father. And everything that's in long suffering, as you can see, overcomes the works of Satan that attack the children of Simeon. Being glad, some exultant, free from care, so you're not worried about what anybody else has. You're walking in singleness, it's just eyes on Elohim, continual praise, having no bitterness. There's no anger. Remaining always gentle and tranquil, not giving over to any violence or ill dealings. You see how you be delivered from the spirit of cruelty and lying. 
and not, well, there will be no deceit because you're walking in that tranquility that comes from the spirit of long suffering. And for the children of Simeon, when you attain to that, and for those that struggle with these spirits, you know that you've really grown close onto the perfection of the faith. Uh, continue, please. But angry temper is in the first place foolish, fickle and senseless. Then from foolishness is engendered bitterness, and from bitterness wrath, and from wrath anger, and from anger spite. Then spite being encompassed of all these evil elements becometh a great sin and incurable. So we see how from the foolishness, the things that anger temper brings about or entices us onto, it's all foolish. If there's no good act that comes from it, no good deed, and then it just leads us all the way down to an incurable sin of spite, doing things in malice, willfully. Now you can see how that anger leads the children of Simeon to those cruel acts. All right? And then justifies it. Absolutely. Continue, please. For when all these spirits dwell in one vessel, for the Holy Spirit also dwelleth, that vessel cannot contain them, but overfloweth. Now we understand what that boiling feeling is. It's overflowing to cause the Holy Spirit to leave. All right? Continue, please. The delicate spirit, therefore, as not being accustomed to dwell with an evil spirit, nor with harshness, departeth from a man of that kind, and seeketh to dwell with gentleness and tranquility. We have the keys if we want the Holy Spirit. Focus on the children of Simeon. Then, when it hath removed from that man in whom it dwells, the man becometh empty of the righteous spirit. And henceforward, being filled with the evil spirits, he is unstable in all his actions, being dragged about hither and thither by the evil spirits. And that's key to see how that anger temper leads to irascibility. All right? And becoming clumsy and things of that nature. All right? Continue, please. And is altogether blinded and bereaved of his good intent. Thus then it happens to all persons of angry temper. You see how one, as you mentioned, being bereaved of one's good intent, could have thought you were doing something good or had a desire to do something good, but through these spirits it led to evil. We have to stay very temperate, gentle, tranquil, and long suffering to ensure that our desire is always toward the good desire, and we don't be led astray. All right. Refrain, therefore, from angry temper, the most evil of evil spirits, but clothe thyself in long suffering, and resist angry temper and bitterness, and thou shalt be round in company with the holiness which is beloved of the higher. Notice angry temper is the most evil of evil spirits. And hopefully for your children of Simeon, you get an understanding of how you get led to anger. To stand aloof from it so that Satan doesn't cause you to do his works any longer. Continue, please. See then that thou never neglect this commandment. But if thou master this commandment, thou shalt be able likewise to keep the remaining commandments. Which I am about to give thee. Be strong in them and endowed with power. And let all be endowed with power, as many as desire to walk in them. And notice, it takes desire. Heart has to be inclined unto it. So, may you children of Simeon be very courageous. And may that be your heart's desire to attain unto this. Uh, let's touch back at the Testament of Dan for more understanding of how to overcome the spirit of anger. Chapter 2, verse 1, and chapter 5, verse 1 to 3, please. You can have the admonitions. Testament of Dan, chapter 2, verse 1. And now, my children, behold, I am dying. And tell you of the truth, that unless you keep yourself in the spirit of lying and of anger, and love truth and long suffering, you shall perish. The long suffering is key. It's been admonished on a few times. And truth, you know, truth delivers. The truth sets us free. All right, continue, please. Testament of Dan, chapter 5, verse 1. 
Observe therefore, my children, the commandments of Ahia, and keep his law. Depart from wrath and hate lying, that Ahia may dwell among you, Delia may flee from you. Speak truth, each one with his neighbor, so shall ye not fall into wrath and confusion. When it says speak truth, it doesn't mean just tell somebody how you feel, because the fruits of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. So that truth has to be meek, because that's how truth works. Truth is sincere. So one has to be mindful to make sure one is not angry or else that truth that you think you may be speaking is actually pouring out of the wrong thing, not speaking in righteousness. So that's what it says. You might think you have good intent, but it becomes evil. So speaking truth to somebody might have good intentions of helping them. Then when it comes out of your mouth, it comes out as evil. It comes out as, as railing on them or whatever the case is. All right. Don't come out seasoned with salt. Right. It's not peaceable. Right. So shall you not fall into wrath and confusion, but ye shall be in peace, having the Alahayim peace. So shall no war prevail over you. Love Ahayim through all your life, and one another with a true heart. And having that true heart would enable you to speak truth. Take the time to really purge the heart, to reform yourself, the self-examination, go into that process of becoming a new creature so that you know your heart is in the right place. Therefore, you'll be able to speak to people truly and love people truly in that long suffering. But dear children of Simeon, long suffering is very key to overcoming these demons of the heart and get into that place of being true and speaking truth in one's heart, and then want to be able to deal truly and speak truly with one's neighbor. You see, it's a growing process for the children of Simeon. It takes time to overcome this, so long as you desire it. As I said, if you be willing and obedient. Now, going back to the Testament of Simeon, we're going back in at chapter two to further help the children of Simeon identify themselves and how to overcome their struggles. Testament of Simeon, chapter two, verse 10. And when Reuben heard these things, he was grieved, for he wished to restore him to his father. But on hearing this, I was exceedingly wroth against Judah, in that he let him go away alive. And for five months I continued wrathful against him. But I had restrained me and withheld me from the power of my hands, for my right hand was half withered for seven days. We will have to walk in humility to keep from being physically hurt. Can you read Sirach chapter 18, verse 21, please? Humble thyself before thou be sick, and in the time of sins show repentance. And we see, sadly, at this time, Simeon had not reached that place of repentance. Hence, you see how it affected him. His envy, that was key to him being heard as well. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 30, please. A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. So may that be our admonition for the children of Simeon to know how a spirit of envy can work against your physical health as well. Children of Simeon struggle with anger, deceit, cruelty, self-will, all come from the root struggle with envy. Can we read Proverbs chapter 27, verse 4, please? Wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous. And we've read about how evil these spirits are, right? Continue, please. But who is able to stand before envy? You see how envy is the worst thing for Simeon. It helps bring about the other things. And we also know the root cause of that envy is self-will. So hopefully it helps one see these things to start to stand it aloof from them. If you are familiar with Simeon, you know that he and his brother Levi destroyed the city and the people of Shechem over Dinah, their sister. And it was through his jealousy that brought that about, speaking on Simeon specifically. Uh, can we read Proverbs chapter 6, verse 34 and 35, please? Proverbs chapter 6, verse 34. But jealousy is the rage of a man, 
Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. He will not regard any ransom, neither will he rest content, though thou givest many gifts. And if you know the story of Shechem and Hamor, they came trying to offer gifts for Dinah, trying to give anything they could. Simeon wasn't having it. What was not known from just reading the book of Genesis was that Simeon was in envy for Dinah because she was his espoused wife. And that's what inspired his wrath to destroy Shechem according to Ahiah's will. If you look at Joshua chapter 34, verse 42. When Shechem took Dinah and raped her, she was only eight years old and a virgin. She, and you can look at the account in Jubilees, chapter 30, verse 1 to 6. And to confirm that she was espoused to Simeon, we can look in the book of Joshua to see where he fulfilled the espousal and married her later on when she was about 18. And he was around about 23 years old. Can we read Joshua chapter 45, verse 2, please, Zachua? Uh, I'm jumping in there. And Simeon, his brother, took his sister Dinah for a wife, and she bare unto him Memuel, Yamin, Ohad, Dachin, and Zochar, five sons. And he afterward came to Buna, the Canaanitish woman, the same as Buna, whom Simeon took captive from the city of Shechem. And Buna was before Dinah and attended upon her. Simeon came to her. She bare unto him Saul. So for you children of Simeon, now you have understanding of who your parents are. Your father, for those of you who are not from Saul, the son of Simeon, you come from Simeon and Dinah. And also for those that are children of Saul, you come from Buna, his concubine. Now, as we mentioned that Simeon was envy for his espoused wife, you can confirm that Dinah was his spouse to Simeon from before because Shechem was guilty of a fornication because it is adultery to sleep with a woman espoused. Can you read Joshua chapter 33, verse 19 to 22? This is jumping into what happened after Shechem had stole Dinah and raped her. Then Jacob was told by some people and Jacob, he got angry, but he sat there and didn't say a word. He sat there and waited until his sons came. And then we're reading, jumping in to see when his sons came back from the field. All right. Joshua chapter 33, verse 19. And Hamor went forth to Jacob to commune with him concerning this matter. And when he had gone from the house of his son Shechem, before he came to Jacob to speak unto him, behold, the sons of Jacob had come from the field. As soon as they had heard about the thing that Shechem, the son of Hamor, had done, and the men were very much grieved concerning their sister. And they all came home fired with anger before the time of gathering in their cattle. And they came and sat before their father, and they spoke unto him, kindled with wrath, saying, Surely death is due to this man and to his household, because the higher Elohim of the whole earth commanded Noah and his children, that man shall never rob or commit adultery. Now behold, Shechem was both ravaged and committed a fornication with our sister, and not one of all the people of the city spoke a word to him. Now that you see that he did commit fornication, he committed adultery, that lets you know she was espoused to Simeon from before. And for those who wonder about rape, notice it's considered robbery because right. he ravaged their sister. So rape is not something that's lawful, all right? Surely thou knowest and understandest that the judgment of death is due to Shechem, and to his father, and to the whole city on account of what has been done. All right, that helps understand the backstory of what happened with Dinah. And to know that this was from Alahayim, Ahaya gave Simeon counsel to deceive Shechem and Hamor to destroy that place. And you can see why Simeon was so important in what transpired because it was his espoused wife. Joshua chapter 34, verse 52, please. And they circumcised Shechem and Hamor, his father, and the five brothers of Shechem. And then everyone rose up and went home. For this thing was from Ahiah against the city of Shechem. And from Ahiah was Simeon's counsel in this matter, in order that Ahiah might deliver the city of Shechem into the hands of Jacob's two sons. 
All right. So this was the will of Allah that happened with the city of Shechem. Um, you can also read Jasher chapter 33, verse 29 to 39, to see what the counsel was that I had given Simeon at your own time. Let's jump back into the Testament of Simeon, chapter 2, verse 13. Testament of Simeon, chapter 2, verse 13. And I knew my children that because of Joseph, this had befallen me. And I repented and wept, and I besought Ahiah al that my hand might be restored, and that I might hold aloof from all pollution and envy and from all folly. Now Simeon finally got to the place of repentance. First thing that started with repentance was speaking truth in his heart. He no longer justified himself, but he knew in his heart that this was because of his uh, envy for Joseph. So you see how truth, having that true heart, is a key step to moving forward. All right? Anybody want to reference? You can truth in your own heart. It's in Psalm 15. Thank you, brother. So he spoke truth and repented from his heart and went on to prayer. So <laughs> speaking truth in our heart, repenting in prayer. This is key for the children of Simeon and all those that struggle with envy, anger, and any evil work. You have the key admonitions. Be truthful. Repent from it. Desire to change. Pray unto Allah to be delivered because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness. We need an advocate. We need Yahweh's deliverance to overcome these spirits. This is not something we can do on our own and in our own strength. Simeon acts to be delivered from all pollution, envy, and all folly. Understanding pollution, the definition was our H2931. That was foul in a religious sense. Defiled, infamous, pollution, unclean. For those of you who have been following along in this lesson, you see how Simeon became polluted. Polluted by evil spirits. The spirit of deceit blinding the mind, the spirit of wrath disturbing the heart. Our angry temper causes the Holy Spirit to overflow. So that avoiding of pollution is not just avoiding unclean food and things of that nature, but avoiding these unclean spirits that defile our souls. Okay? And envy, we talked about, and all folly, that was important as well. That's something that children of Simeon have to look out for. Folly, by definition, was uh, H5039. It's our foolishness. That is morally wickedness. Concretely, crime. Well, you've seen that it mentioned wickedness and folly. If you remember, we read the Shepherd of Hermes. It talked about angry tempers in the first place, bitter, foolish, and senseless. And I have admonition to understand how one gets into folly as well and gets into acts of cruelty or crime. So children of Simeon probably have a struggle with committing crime today, acts of violence, right? And also acts of wickedness, being deceitful, lying. You know, these are signs of the children of Simeon. And we see that it's important to pray for deliverance from these things as your father did. Can you continue in uh, chapter 2, verse 14, a testament of Simeon, please. For I knew that I had devised an evil thing before Ahiah and Jacob my father, on account of Joseph my brother, that I envied him. We see that Simeon's children devise deceit in their mind through envy. The chief spirits that work against the children of Simeon is deceit and Envy or jealousy. It deceives them when vexed through self will, through desire. As Zach explained, if you are getting something they want, they'll be in anger and envy you through hatred of heart. And also, if they desire to do something and you're not going along in compliance with that, their wrath will be aroused and they'll be bitter with you about it, as you've seen in the case with Simeon. Let's continue chapter 3 of the Testament of Simeon, please. Chapter 3, verse 1. And now, my children, hearken unto me and beware of the spirit of deceit and envy. For envy ruleth over the whole mind of a man, 
suffereth him neither to eat nor to drink, nor to do any good thing, but it ever suggesteth to him to destroy him that he envieth. And so long as he that is envied flourisheth, he that envieth fadeth away. We see how Simeon is very clear for you, dear Simeonites. Stay away from deceit and envy. And it's interesting he mentioned deceit first because he knew that it was the spirit of deceit that sent the spirit of jealousy after him. And also from Testament of Dan, the spirit of deceit is what's sent by anger. So that's why he mentioned deceit first, I would think. Because if your mind isn't deceived by the lies that come from angry and wrathful thoughts, then you wouldn't give in to envy. And if you don't give in to envy, you won't be stirred up unto anger because envy causes anger as we're going to read about. So it looks like that's why he harped on these two spirits. We've been touching on how anger blinds the soul and things of that nature. And then see how also envy takes the whole mind of a man. So for the children of Simeon, we're harping on it because it really engulfs you. That envy really takes your whole mind over according to what Simeon is attesting. As the scripture said, envy causes the envier to fade away. So the children of Simeon struggle with anxiety, or sorrow, or depression among them due to these spirits working against them in their minds and souls. All right. Let me help you out real quick. Yeah, oh, please. It's called the spirit of deceit because Simeon's problem was hearken unto idols, hearken unto evil spirits. Now, what happens is, is when the spirit of deceit enters into the mind of Simeon, it takes over his whole body. That's why it says, for envy ruleth over the whole mind of a man. So it literally takes over the whole mind. They're completely engulfed in the evil spirit, the thought that the evil spirit brought forth. Hence, their mind is completely consumed and they act upon it. That's why the spirit suffered him neither to eat or to drink because evil spirits aren't able to eat and drink as you attest in the book of Enoch. So once he's completely gone in the mind, taken over by the principality, he's not concerned about eating or drinking. He's only concerned about that envy, and that person in whom they have their eyes set upon. So if you ever dealt with issues like that, where you're completely envious of somebody and you can't pretty much operate, and only thing that's on your mind is that person and the, what's going on with them and, and, and how much you want to be better than them or, or you're completely envious and you're operating in deceit toward that person or toward others to get what you want so that you can achieve greater than that other person that you're envying. Chances are that you're a simulanite. So along with all the other things that we've been over with Simeon, the anger, the lying that comes with it, uh, so on and so forth. Two years, therefore, I afflicted my soul with fasting in the fear of Ahia. And I learned that deliverance from envy cometh from the fear of Ahia. For if a man flee to Ahia, the evil spirit runneth away from him, and his mind is lightened. We're discussing all the bad things, we also have to be attentive to the cures to overcome these things. Notice Simeon did it for two years. That lets the children of Simeon know this is a process. You have to endure the process. It's not going to happen instantly. You're just free. It's, a, it's working in the works of Allah Hayyam to overcome this thing. Your father himself, it said, two years, therefore, I afflicted my souls with fasting in the fear of Ahaya. This wasn't about not eating food and drink. Because he said he afflicted his soul in the fear of Ahaya. He overcame the idols of his heart, as Brother Zachary touched on how they have the struggle of hearkening to idols. Because remember, you're the children of Simeon. His name means to hear. So who you listen to is very important because you're people of valor. Whoever you're listening to, you're going to strive in that. Therefore, he focused on only hearkening, only working righteousness, only abiding in the fear of Ahaya to overcome that evil. So enduring the trial is key for the children of Simeon, not turning back. Um, fasting the fear of Ahaya, we're going to learn what that means in the scriptures. 
And while enduring this, pay attention to the experiences. We had started off the lesson talking about how Simeon learned through experience what it was that caused him to be angry, cruel, and self-willed and whatnot. You can see it's through the process of fast, and he learned himself. And this is good admission for us all. That's what this journey is, to learn ourselves, to see what's happening within us. And as he said here, he learned that deliverance from every cometh by the fear of Allah Hayyam. And we see what will lighten the mind. Brother Zachwell touched on how the envy takes over the mind and it ends up engulfing the whole body. Dan gave the admonitions of how the anger does essentially the same thing. Now we see the cure to have our minds lightened, to be delivered from these evil works. Fasting in the fear of Allah is a key cure for the children of Simeon. Let's touch on what this fasting is to overcome the spirit of deceit. And we know it also requires prayer because he said, for if a man flee to Ahaya, the evil spirit runneth away from him and his mind is lightened. This touches back on prayer is essential. As Simeon did, he acknowledged the truth in his heart. He repented and started praying. Pray to stand aloof from these things. So that we see that flee into Alahayim. When that thought of envy comes, run to Alahayim to make that evil spirit flee from you. There's no dialogues to have with it. I think the lesson was is that, well, uh, obedience is a war of the mind. Yep. Right. There's no dialogues to have with evil spirits. There's no entertaining of their deceitful words. Antics. Flee to Ahaya. Say it again. The, the antics. The antics, yes. Good work. <laughs> Lead to Ahaya so that our mind may be lightened. All right. We're going to understand Ahaya will and what this fasting is because some of these evil entities, they don't come out unless we actually fast the right way. Can you read Matthew 17 and 21, please? Albeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Ziache said his words are spirit and they are life. This wasn't referring to fasting of food because even Simeon talked about how the evil spirit envy doesn't even suffer you to eat or drink. So the issue wasn't about not eating food or drinking the true fast. Let's look into the scriptures to understand what that fast is in the fear of Ahaya to overcome these spirits so that the children of Simeon may have that admonition to be delivered. This is the letter of Barnabas. I'm going to read chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. You can find this book on the website as well. Okay? Uh, on you, Zachwa, please. Barnabas chapter 3, verse 1. He speaketh again, therefore, to them concerning these things. Wherefore, fast ye for me, saith I, so that your voice is heard this day crying aloud. This is not the fast which I have chosen, saith I, not a man obeying his soul. Not though you should bend your neck as a hoop, and put on sackcloth, and make your bed of ashes. Not even so shall you call a fast that is susceptible. Let's jump into the Shepherd of Hermas, Parable 5, Chapter 1, Verse 4 and 5. Please understand what a true fast is. Allah desires not such a vain fast. For by so fasting unto Allah thou shalt do nothing for righteousness. But fast thou unto Allah such a fast as this. Do no wickedness in thy life. Serve Ahaya with a pure heart. Observe his commandments and walk in his ordinances. And let no evil desire rise up in your heart. But believe Allah And if thou shalt do these things and fear him. And control thyself from every evil deed. Thou shalt live unto Allah And if thou do these things. Thou shalt accomplish a great fast and one acceptable to Allah. It was key. He said, don't even let an evil desire rise up in your heart. That's where Simeon was talking about. If a man flee to Allah, the spirit fleeth from him and his mind is lightened. Don't let it even have place. And also we talked about how it's a process that you're learning yourself. It's overcoming you. We are our own battle. This is why we are to examine ourselves. 
and not compare ourselves amongst ourselves because then we won't see the beam in our own eye. It was also key what was said, if thou shalt do these things and fear him and control thyself from every evil deed. Let self-control, let temperance, learning how, who you are and learning how to overcome yourself. This is the process of attaining unto salvation. Thomas talked about how Yache made him to know himself. This is what Yache will do in us if we truly desire it and walk in truth in our heart. Let's go back to Barnabas to get further understanding on this true fasting, please. Barnabas chapter 3, verse 3. But unto us, he saith, Behold, this is the fast which I have chosen, saith Ahia, loosen every band of wickedness, untie the tightened cords of forcible contracts, send away the broken ones released, and tear in pieces every unjust bond. Break thy bread to the hungry, and if thou seest one naked, clothe him, Bring the shelterless into thy house, and if thou seest a humble man, thou shalt not despise him, neither shall any one of thy household, and of thy own seed. Then shall thy light break forth in the morning, and thy healing shall arise quickly, and righteousness shall go forth before thy face, and the glory of Allah shall environ thee. Then shalt thou cry out, and Allah shall hear thee, while thou art still speaking. He shall say, Lo, I am here. If thou shalt take away from thee the yoke and the stretching forth of, of the finger and the word of murmuring, and shall give thy bread to the hungry heartily, and shall pity the abased of soul. We see what true fasting is. That is good. Children of Simeon and those watching you have the lessons and uh Feel free to visit the lesson called Sabbath the Light and the Sabbath Day Playlist where we go more into understanding the true fast from edification. Jumping back in to the Testament of Simeon. Testament um, of Simeon chapter 3 verse 4. All right, go ahead. Two years therefore afflicted my soul with fasting and the fear of Ahaya, and I learnt that deliverance from envy cometh by the fear of Allah. For if a man flee to Ahaya, the evil spirit runneth away from him. And his mind is lightened, and henceforward he sympathizeth with him whom he envied, and forgiveth those who are hostile to him, and so ceases from his envy. So repentance after a holy sort will strengthen the children of Simeon to have sympathy toward others, and also not to take it personal when others do them harm, but to forgive them willingly. Continuing in Testament of Simeon, chapter 4, please. And my father asked concerning me, because he saw that I was sad, and I said unto him, I am pained in my liver, for I mourn more than they are, because I was guilty of the selling of Joseph. You see how it affects the health. His hand was withered, pain in the liver. And God will touch on that, how the spirit of hatred affected his liver as well. So you can see how these evil spirits affect our health. All right, continue, please. And when we went down into Egypt, and he bound me as a spy, I knew that I was suffering justly, and I grieved not. First he had spoke truth in his heart, knowing that it was because of his envy for Joseph why his hand was messed up. And then also you see here, he got away from the spirit of self-justification. He got away from the angry temper that justifies itself. Rather, he counted out how righteous for his judgments. He didn't make an excuse, he acknowledged what was what and knew why he was suffering. He committed himself unto Allah and waited for Ahayah to do his will. Continue, please. Now Joseph was a good man, and he had the spirit of Allah within him. Being compassionate and pitiful, he bore no malice against me, but loved me, even as the rest of his brethren. This is a cure for the children of Simeon. It being as Joseph, Having the spirit of Allah is a cure. And the key to know the spirit of Allah is with you is being compassionate and pitiful without malice. That's a key cure to know that the spirit of Allah is there because it causes us to love our brothers or sister, even if they did wrong unto us with no malice. That is very essential and is also a commandment for the children of Simeon, as we look at 
his admonitions for his children here in verse 5. So please take heed here. Beware therefore, my children, all jealousy and envy, and walk in singleness of soul and with a good heart. It's that ties back to your fasting and righteousness. Don't let any evil desire arise in your heart. And the way to get away from that is singleness of soul. You have to go read the Testament of Issachar to understand how to be single. Because that's going to help you be content to avoid that self-will and the spirit of envy. And do all things with a good heart. And you see how this is a true inner purge for the children of Simeon to overcome. All right? Keeping in mind Joseph, your father's brother, that Allah may give you also grace and glory and blessing upon your heads, even as ye saw in Joseph's case. And where this is where he admonishes you, children of Simeon, keep Joseph in mind, which is encouraging you to remember how he operated in this with the spirit of Allah. Children of Simeon, you have to be compassionate and pitiful with no malice to people. It's key for you to receive a blessing, to receive grace, the grace that's in Yache and the glory that's to come with him that we hope for, brothers and sisters of the tribe of Simeon. Difference with envy and jealousy. Jealousy by definition, because he said to stay from all jealousy and all envy. Zach, well, you can speak on this, please. Jealous feeling or showing envy of someone or their achievements and advantages. So jealous is the feeling. It's more so like a, a attribute. Um, you'll be jealous of somebody because of a reason, or you'll be jealous of somebody because of something they have. Right now, jealous isn't the isn't the same as envy because envy is on the next level. Now you can be jealous of somebody, like man, I'm so jealous of you. You you have this, you know that, you know that that's one step of it. Now, jealousy isn't what takes root that causes you to sin. It's the envy that takes root that causes you to sin, because envy comes with other spirits. Now, jealousy is what brings in envy. So you can say, yo, I mean, I'm jealous of, you know, I'm jealous of your, you know, of your new car, you know, like, yo, it's a really nice car. You know, I, I would like to have a nice car. Now, envy is the next one that comes in. Go ahead and read the definition of envy. Envy. A feeling of discontented or resentful longing aroused by someone else's possessions, qualities, or good turn. All right, so now, instead of just being jealous, now you've taken it to envy, you know, if that's the case, right? Now you're feeling discontented or resentful longing. Now you're like, I want that car. Like, I'm not, I'm not just jealous that they got a new car. I'm longing for one too. And until I get one, I'm going to operate such and such and such. Or I'm discontented. Like, I have a hatred for that person because they got a new car. Right. So you can see how jealousy and envy, they work hand in hand. But it's the envy that's the more powerful one between jealousy and envy. Or the more yeah, mischievous for that. one. Thanks for explaining that because it, it puts what, what happened to Simeon into context. Because he was jealous of Joseph, but then he acknowledges that he envied him is why he got hurt. Because that anger developed with it. And that resentment developed with it. So I figured that was key for the children of Simeon to understand how those spirits work. Now jump into chapter 4 verse 6. So for cure, for overcoming all jealousy and envy, children of Simeon, walk in singleness of soul with a good heart in the same way Joseph was with compassion and pity with no malice to receive that grace and glory. And Simeon's going to touch on how Joseph operated so that children of Simeon can know how to treat their brother and their sister. Chapter 4, verse 6, A Testament of Simeon, please. All his days he reposed us not concerning this thing, but loved us as his own soul, and beyond his own sons glorified us, and gave us riches and cattle and fruits. Do ye also, my children, love each one his brother with a good heart, 
and the spirit of envy will withdraw from you. For this maketh yeah. savage the soul and destroys the body. It was key with what Joseph did. He didn't reproach his brothers concerning this thing because he truly forgave them. So for children of Simeon, if you have that issue where you don't forget what a person did or you don't let it go, or when a, a, a situation arises, you get upset, you throw back out what they did before, this and this and that, you did this, you did that, that's a key sign of bitterness so that you can be aware of it and not operate in that manner, but be as Joseph, where you don't bring stuff back up because you actually love the person, you've forgiven them. That's key for loving your brother with a good heart so that that spirit of envy will depart. If you can stop back there, Zachor. But this make a savage the soul and destroys the body. It causeth anger and war in the mind. See, he lets you know that it's envy that brings about the anger, as Zach Wall has explained it, right? Continue. And stirreth up unto deeds of blood, and leadeth the mind into frenzy, and suffereth not prudence to act in men. Moreover, it taketh away sleep, and causeth to mope to the soul, and trembling to the body. Oh, Simeonites, you may have trouble sleeping at night from the racing thoughts. As we talked about how they have issues with crime. You can also see how that anger through envy leads them to hurt people, or at least to have thoughts of wanting to do real bad things to people. Continue, please. But even in sleep, some malicious jealousy, deluding him, gnaweth, and with wicked spirits disturbeth his soul, and causeth the body to be troubled, and waketh the mind from sleep and confusion. So people that may have night terrors or you know, a lot of bad dreams. Dreams are doing some bad things. Now, struggle for the children of Simeon. And as a wicked and poisonous spirit, so appeared it to men. Zachary, you explained how the envy takes them over. And what we all just read was Simeon explaining the experience of being overtaken with envy. So Simeonites can identify with themselves. Chapter 5. Therefore, with Joseph comely in appearance and goodly to look upon, because no wickedness dwelt in him, but some of the trouble of the spirit the face manifesteth. And now, my children, make your hearts good before Ahia, and your ways straight before men, and ye shall find grace before Ahia and men. There we have the admonitions from Simeon. Focus on this reformation of heart through prayer, speaking truth in one's heart, being long-suffering, enduring the process that it takes to overcome this envy, doing good works in the fear of Allah Hayyam, and that righteous fast that your father did so that you may find grace with all. Walk straight with men in uprightness and in truth to avoid deceit and cruelty towards anyone. And Ahayo deliver. As Simeon said, my children, make your hearts good before Ahaya. Now you know the process, fasting and righteousness. Being true in your heart, loving your brother, being pitiful and having compassion with no malice and staying long suffering to make your hearts good and your way straight before men that you shall find grace before Ahaya and men. You know, it's through Yache. He is who's working in us to press us forward to overcome these spirits that attack us for the children of Simeon here and for all those listening that can identify or relate. Simeon's children are corrupted in fornication as well. So one needs to read the Testament of Reuben for admonitions to overcome fornication. And watch the lesson, The Lust of the Eyes, in the Growth and Fruits playlist. Testament of Simeon, chapter 5, verse 3, please, Aqua. This stems from their self will. That's where the fornication comes from. Ah. And jealousy, because remember, Reuben said, All jealousy dwelleth in the lust thereof of fornication. Beware therefore of fornication, for fornication is mother of all evils, separating from Elohim and bringing near to Belial. For I have seen it inscribed in the writings of Enoch, that your son shall be corrupted in fornication, and shall do harm to the sons of Levi with the sword. But they shall not be able to withstand Levi, but he shall wage the war of Ahia and shall conquer all of your hosts. And they shall be few in number, divided in Levi and Judah. 
and there shall be none of you for sovereignty. Even as also our father prophesied in blessings. Zachor had mentioned how Simeon and I struggle with idolatry, hearkening to idols. This fornication that Simeon had committed was the matter of Baal Peor, where he found the Simeonites committing spiritual fornication by worshiping idols and eating sacrifice offered unto idols, and also literal fornication with the daughters of the Midianites. There are Simeonites among the people known as the Negroes, the slaves, and the Bantus as well, as there's also Simeonites in, among the ten tribes. So that will help for those children of Simeon that's listening to know they can fall in either category. They have to pay attention to the spirits that's attacking them to know which tribe they actually come from. Simeonites also have an issue with being harmful to the children of Levi. So their brethren, you'll find them dwelling amongst each other. And also the Simeonites will be doing harm to the Levites wherever they are. And their father gives encouragement to overcome these things. Mm -hmm. Continue in chapter 6, please. Behold, I have told you all things, that I may be acquitted of your sins. Now, if you remove from you your envy and all stiff neckness, as a rose shall my bones flourish in Israel, and as a lily my flesh in Jacob, and my odor shall be as the odors of livingness. The correct definition for stiff neck should definitely just be stubborn. <laughs> right, that puts it real simple, right? right? Children of Simeon struggle with stubbornness. As you've seen in the case of Simeon, when he set his mind against Joseph, there was nothing that could change it. And also when he was wrathful against Judah for so long a time, he held on to it. It's a struggle for the children of Simeon because they have self-will where they want what they want. And once their mind is made up, there's nothing anyone can tell them. So it really takes humility to overcome this and to actually hearken to Allah and listen to the law and listen to what's right. Avoid envy and all stiff neck and his children of Simeon. Father, very straight about that. So we have the attacks on the children of Simeon. Starts with self-will. Then when they don't get their desire, they're vexed. Then from vexation, the spirit of anger sends forth the spirit of deceit to make them jealous. And anger uses the net of deceit through hatred of heart to make them envious. And from envy causes anger and war in the mind. And through getting in their feelings, they struggle with lying. Through wrath, working against them. And then you have folly, pollution, being polluted with unclean spirits. Stiff neckedness, which is stubbornness, not willing to hear. Fornication, which comes from self-will, wanting what one wants, one's own desire. As was in the case in the matter of Baal Peor, the Simeonite man, he took the woman for his desire and didn't care what anyone else thought or how it affected anyone else. And they also have a struggle with fornication through jealousy because Reuben told that all jealousy dwells in the lust of fornication. And these things are the struggles for the children of Simeon. Yet their struggles derive from being vexed or in anger unto jealousy and envy because of their self-will to lead them into the other errors. If they overcome by bowing down their ear to hear, they shall flourish in the kingdom with their father Simeon. Now if you remove from you your envy and all stiff nakedness, as a rose shall my bones flourish in Israel, and as a lily my flesh in Jacob, and my odors shall be as the odors of Lebanon, and as cedars shall holy ones be multiplied from me forever, and their branches shall stretch afar off. Now that's interesting what he said, that branches shall stretch afar off in the kingdom of Yache, they're going to have thousands of children. Also, as cedars shall holy ones be multiplied for me forever, those children of Simeon that attain unto Yache, the end of righteousness for them that believe, they're going to be immortal. They're going to partake in the change and become angels. And that's what he said, as cedars, because as cedars are, the angels are big. So Simeon knows the rewards that awaits his children that hearken to him and believe on 
our everlasting father, Yache. Continue, please. Then shall perish the seed of Canaan, and a remnant shall not be unto Amalek. And all the Cappadocians shall perish, and all the Hittites shall be utterly destroyed. Then shall fail the land of Ham, and all the people shall perish. Then shall all the earth rest from trouble, and all the world under heaven from war. Then the mighty one of Israel shall glorify Shem, for Ahayah Elohim shall appear on earth, and himself save men. Then shall all the spirits of deceit be given to be trodden on the foot, and men shall rule over wicked spirits. Then shall I arise in joy, and will bless the Most High because of his marvelous works, because Elohim hath taken a body, eaten with men, and saved men. Now, all these things Simeon knows is to come. He's speaking of what Yache is going to do, right? <laughs> it's interesting what he commands his children, right? After telling them all that, he goes on to say, Simeon gave his children the cure to obey Levi and Judah and not lift themselves up against them. Simeonites, you have to be mindful of what your father admonishing you because he wants you to partake in what's to come, <laughs> right? Uh, chapter 7, please. And now, my children... Obey Levi and Judah, and be not lifted up against these two tribes, for from them shall arise unto you the salvation of Elohim. For Ahiah shall raise up from Levi, as it were a high priest, and from Judah, as it were a king, Elohim and man. He shall save all the Gentiles and the race of Israel. Therefore, I give you these commands, that ye also may command your children, that they may observe them throughout their generations. This is what you have to do, and you have to pass it on to your children. Because Simeon knows his children are going to really struggle. Because the spirits that attack them bring them to the right hand of Satan and cause them to work his work. So he was keen to make sure to tell you to pass it on to your children for all your generations and to observe them, that they may observe them too. It's key to hearken. Hearken is real important, their children of Simeon. Continue, please. And when Simeon had made an end of commanding his sons, he slept with his fathers, being a hundred and twenty years old. And they laid him in a wooden coffin to take up his bones to Hebron. And they took him up secretly after the war of the Canaanites. For the bones of Joseph the Egyptians guarded in the tombs of the kings. For the sorcerers told them that on the departure of the bones of Joseph there should be throughout all the land darkness and gloom and an exceeding great plague to the Egyptians, so that even with a lamp a man should not recognize his brother. And the sons of Simeon bewailed their father, and they were in Egypt until the day of their departure by the hand of Moses. And that's the admonition for the sons of Simeon. I hope that's edifying for you, Simeonites. May I be pleased to cause his spirit to awaken the children of Simeon. Anything else, Aqua? Oh, I think we're good. That was pretty in-depth. Yeah, it was nice. Where's Ahaya? All right. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.